Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for, uh, for joining us. We're going to get going here in just a minute. Let uh, let everybody queue in and deal with the, the fun of the technology. I didn't realize I was unmuted. I think I can... See, see everybody uh, slowly rolling in here. Uh, we're gonna break down the, the afternoon into a quick how-to video, uh, and then uh, break down into just kind of what we're gonna scale out through the rest of the, uh, the presentation, uh, and then turn it over to you all for some question and answers. Um, we'll probably get going uh, here about five, five oh five, five ten, give or take, just to let everybody get dialed in and get everything squared away. So thank you for your patience. We're going to get going here in just a few minutes, guys. For those just joining, uh, thank you for taking the, the time to jump on, and uh, we're just letting everybody get dialed in, and we should be uh, should be getting going here right around uh, 505, 507. Uh, just give everybody time to deal with the fun of the technology, uh, especially if it's your first time on GoToWebinar. Thank you. 
All right, for those that just joined us, uh, thanks once again. Uh, we're just uh, letting everybody queue in here and get situated. We'll be getting going here in just another minute or two. Thank you very much for, uh, for taking the time this evening. All right, everyone. We are going to uh, to start off with uh, just a quick overview of, of the wonderful application that we're all uh, asking you to sign into tonight. Uh, just kind of give you a brief uh, brief how to on how things work, um, and then we'll jump into our, our uh, presentation about the, the uh, projects here. Uh, so, um, for anyone joining on a, a computer, tablet, or smartphone, uh, this is a, a quick way to interact with us. Um, using GoToWebinar. Uh, so first, uh, I'll show you how to access the control panel on GoToWebinar. Um, and before that, actually, uh, my name's Eric Troll. I'll be one of the uh, the many project teams. Uh, I'm a consultant with uh, working with FDOT on this project. Uh, so I apologize for not introducing myself. Uh, but back to GoToWebinar. Uh, to access the control panel, uh, if you're on desktop, uh, you should have a, a small arrow uh, on the top of the toolbar to uh, the top right of your screen. Uh, if you click on that, uh, it'll expand uh, the control panel. Uh, but if you're on your mobile device, simply tap the screen to display the same options. Uh, so this will display the, uh, the control panel, enabling you to ask a question uh, or just download a, a project file. So to download project files, uh, including a comment form, if you'd like to submit a comment by mail at a later date, uh, simply click on the file within the list when you're viewing on desktop uh, or when you're viewing a mobile, uh, click on the document icon. And this will display the uh, the list of files to download. Uh, so for those of you that are just calling in, all project files as well as uh, this presentation uh, will be available on the project website that will be provided later in the presentation. Uh, and then finally, to ask a question at any time throughout the presentation, uh, I see uh, some of you are uh, already asking questions. Uh, that's great. Um, please type the question into the, uh, the field marked questions at the bottom of the desktop menu. Uh, from your mobile device, simply click the question mark and uh, enter your question at the bottom of the page that opens. Uh, for those calling in, uh, contact information to reach the appropriate FDO team project manager. Um, Will be provided later in the uh, in the presentation. Uh, so right now we're going to pop up a, a short um, short little one question poll. Uh, we're curious about how you all heard about this uh, public meeting. 
Uh, and then uh, we'll give that a minute or two to let you guys uh, answer. Uh, and then I will turn it over to Ty Gardner to kick off the meeting. Thank you, Eric. I'd like to welcome everybody to the virtual public meeting for improvements along State Road 527, also known as Orange Avenue and Hensel Avenue in Orange County. I am Ty Garner, the FDOT project manager for Project B, which goes from Prince Street to Mandalay Road. Also here tonight is Naziro Isaac, the FDOT project manager for Project A, which begins at Sand Lake Road and ends at Prince Street to the north. A few minutes, in a few minutes, we'll begin the presentation about the plan improvements. Following the presentation, we will address any questions you may have. Before that, I would like to go over a few housekeeping items. First, this webinar is being recorded and will be available to watch on demand by going to the webpage for either project at Central Florida website, www.cflroads.com. We also have provided a PDF of the presentation and script that can be downloaded to your computer during the webinar. You can find it under handouts on the menu to the right of your screen. Also found in that section are comment forms that you can download for your later use. Please note that all attendees will remain in listen only mode throughout the meeting. We ask that you type any questions you have into the question box that appears on the right side of your screen. Please indicate whether your question is pertaining to Project A, Project B, or both. After the presentation, a moderator will read each question aloud, and it will be directed to the appropriate team member to address. We will do our best to answer each question. If, you're not, if your question is not answered here, or you'd prefer to send your question at a later date, please complete the form and send it to us through email or mail or feel free to call us at any time. We will be providing our contact information later in the presentation. For those of you who may not be familiar with GoToWebinar, we have a few short slides to help you be involved. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Ty. Uh, we're gonna, just going to run through this really quickly. Again, I saw a couple more people jump on. Uh, so I just want to make sure everybody has the, the full uh, understanding of how this works. And then uh, right around 5.20, we will uh, begin on the actual uh, presentation of the projects. Uh, so once again, um, just going to show you how to, to get to the uh, control panel. Uh, so on desktop at the, the top there, you can see the uh, there's a little toolbar. Uh, just grab that orange arrow and that'll expand the uh, the control panel or on mobile simply uh, tap the screen and that will expand uh, the, the control panel and the options there uh, so it just enables you to ask a question or, or download project files uh, and then to actually download those files uh, on desktop you have the, the panel about halfway down uh, which should have three different uh, files in there uh, one is uh, just a fact sheet about this uh, this, these two projects uh, and then you'll see a, a comment form for both project A and project B that you can download and fill out uh, at your convenience. Uh, so if you're on mobile you just uh, click the, uh, the file icon there and, and download in much the same way. Uh, and then finally uh, again to ask a question and I see some of you are doing that that's great. Uh, if you have a question already just from what you've mailed uh, or the, the article that you came across uh, about the project by all means uh, send that over. Um, but you can ask that uh, towards the bottom on desktop of that control panel or on mobile uh, by hitting that question mark uh, and then entering in the, the field at the bottom of 
the, uh, the mobile application there. And uh, I'm, I'm liking polls this evening. So thank you for participating in my first one. Uh, this next one, uh, we want to know what project you're here uh, to, to learn about. Um, so we're going to populate that here in a minute uh, and then uh, may give you a minute or two of silence, but uh, we're, we'll get going uh, just about 520 with the actual presentation. Uh, our goal is to keep the presentation short and sweet. It's about 10 minutes long. Uh, if you have a question, feel free to, to send it over. Uh, if it all makes sense and it's all great, we'll let you all get on with your evening and, and dinner and the family. Um, but we will uh, get going here in just a couple of minutes. Thanks again. I'll just chime in once again. Uh, great question from somebody. It was actually some good feedback. Uh, the uh, the video may actually be over the control panel, so you might have to to grab the window that the video is being uh, being uh, projected in and slide that over to, to access that control panel thing. So uh, thank you for the comment that that got sent in for that, and hopefully that helps somebody out. We'll be back with you uh, shortly. Thanks so much. All right. So uh, once again, my name is Eric Troll. I'm one of the, the consultants working uh, with uh, Florida Department of Transportation on Project A. Uh, and I'd like to introduce my my uh, associate here, uh, Amy Sermons, if you wanted to jump on. Sure. Hi, I'm Amy Sermons, and I'll be talking to you a little bit later about Project B. So uh, once we get started on the presentation. Thanks, Eric. Fantastic. See you in a minute. Thank you all once again. This is a uh, this is new technology for us, as I'm sure it is for you. Uh, so I'm laughing at myself through uh, some of the quirks. Hopefully, you can uh, join us on that, uh, and uh, we will uh, we'll get going. So again, thank you, uh, thank you all for uh, taking the time this evening to uh, to join our public information uh, meeting. Let me just pull up my my slides here, and we will get get going. So this is uh, a public meeting for, for two projects, as we mentioned uh, earlier, uh, reconstruction and resurfacing uh, on State Road 527, also known as Orange Avenue uh, in Orange County. So in November uh, 2014, uh, FDOT completed a corridor planning study of State Road 527 uh, from Sand Lake Road uh, to Hofner Avenue. Uh, and the study focused on enhancing multimodal features like uh, pedestrian and bicycle mobility uh, and connectivity to the Sand Lake Road Sunrail Station. Uh, the final recommendations uh, of the corridor planning study were used to guide the intent for these uh, reconstruction and resurfacing projects that we're going to share with you this evening. Uh, so the Florida Department of Transportation has three ongoing design projects along State Road 527 uh, Orange Avenue. Uh, the southernmost project from Sand Lake Road to Prince Street 
uh, is a roadway uh, resurfacing project uh, with reconstruction of the islands at Sand Lake Road uh, and a variety of pedestrian improvements such as uh, realigning crosswalks, uh, closing sidewalk gaps, uh, or I'm sorry, reconstructing uh, curb ramps, uh, and upgrading pedestrian signals. The second project, or Project B there, uh, is along Orange Avenue at the split one-way pair. Uh, so that's from Prince Street to Mandalay Road. Uh, so this project uh, includes resurfacing the roadway uh, and modifying the existing roadway to provide uh, reduced lane widths, buffered bike lanes, uh, enhanced pedestrian features, uh, and curb extensions to define on-street parking and other aesthetic uh, enhancements. Uh, and the third project, or Project C on your screen, uh, is further north along Orange Avenue uh, from Grant to Gore Street uh, and involves roadway resurfacing, additional enhancements, uh, and those include uh, curb extensions uh, to define uh, on-street parking, raised medians, and enhanced uh, pedestrian features. Uh, so this meeting tonight is being held for the first two of those projects, uh, from Sand Lake Road to Prince Street uh, and from Prince Street to Mandalay Road. Uh, a public uh, meeting was held uh, for the project between Grant and Gore Streets back in November 2019. Uh, and more information about all three of these projects can be found on uh, cflroads.com. Uh, and we'll provide you with uh, some details on how to access uh, CFL Roads uh, at the conclusion of this presentation. So uh, Project A uh, begins at Sand Lake Road, uh, State Road 482. Uh, and continues for about 1.2 miles uh, to Prince Street in the uh, Pine Castle neighborhood. And uh, the intent of this project is to resurface the existing roadway, uh, as well as a variety of pedestrian improvements, such as uh, realigning crosswalks, uh, closing sidewalk gaps, reconstructing curb ramps to meet uh, current American with Disabilities Act or, or ADA standards. Uh, and also included in the project are related drainage, uh, signage, uh, and pavement marking improvements. So to start by uh, taking a drive along the corridor, uh, we'll look at the um, improvements proposed for this project, uh, beginning at the south end or the, uh, the left side of your screen there uh, at Sand Lake Road. Uh, the roadway, of course, as I mentioned, will be resurfaced uh, and the concrete islands at the southwest corner of uh, Sand Lake Road will be reconstructed. Uh, and then drainage ditch improvements will begin adjacent to the construction materials uh, and southwest marine properties uh, and continue northward. The roadway resurfacing and drainage improvements on the western side of Orange Avenue continue uh, throughout the, the corridor on the north side. Uh, and the proposed improvements also include closing sidewalk gaps and improving curb ramps along the corridor to meet the guidelines uh, and standards of the American with Disabilities Act. And finally, uh, the roadway resurfacing continues to the northern project limit at Prince Street uh, with sidewalk gaps continuing to be filled and curb ramps uh, improved along the corridor. Uh, and that pretty much wraps it up for Project A, and I'll turn it over to uh, to Amy for, for Project B here. Great. Thank you, Eric. Uh, so Project B begins at Prince Street in the Pine Castle neighborhood and ends at Mandalay Road in the city of Edgewood. The roadway in the northbound direction is named Hansel Avenue, and in the southbound direction is named Orange Avenue. The project length along Orange Avenue is 1.14 miles, and along Hansel Avenue is 1.16 miles, for a total project length of 2.3 miles. Next slide. State Route 527, or Orange Avenue, currently includes two travel lanes, left turn lanes to some of the side streets, on-street parking or striped pavement areas, and a bike lane for each roadway of the one-way pair. Existing sidewalks are provided along both sides of the corridor. The intent of this project is to resurface the existing roadway to provide seven foot wide buffered bike lanes. The on-street parking will be updated with curb extensions and concrete sidewalks will be reconstructed to meet current Americans with Disabilities Act or ADA standards. This project will also improve existing transit stop facilities. Now let's take a drive along this portion of the corridor uh, to view the improvements proposed for the project. We will begin at the south end of the project, which is at Prince Street, on the left side of your screen. The roadway will be resurfaced to provide seven foot wide buffered bike lanes. Curb extensions will be constructed to better define on-street parking areas, to improve roadway aesthetics, and provide general traffic calming throughout the corridor. 
sidewalk and curb ramps along the corridor, corridor will be reconstructed to meet the guidelines and standards of the Americans with Disabilities Act. The roadway restructuring and restriping continues north to create those wider bike lanes. The proposed improvements also continue, also continue curb extensions and sidewalk reconstruction with the ADA compliant curb ramps. The roadway resurfacing and restriping continues to the northern project limit at Mandalay Road to create wider bike lanes. Sidewalk reconstruction with the ADA compliant, curb, ADA compliant curb ramps also continues along the northern portion of the corridor to the end of the project on the right of your screen. All three of the projects that Eric mentioned earlier, earlier are currently in the design phase. Following the design phase, the construction of projects A, B, and C are planned to be conducted together. The construction phase is currently scheduled to begin in the fall of 2021. The combined construction cost for all three projects is estimated at $10.8 million. These improvements will be constructed entirely within the existing right-of-way and therefore will not require property acquisition. In order to maintain the flow of vehicle traffic, Construction will be performed during off-peak hours. Access to businesses and residence, residences will be maintained at all times, and access points will be clearly marked for the traveling public. Advance notice will be given if there is a need for temporary lane closures. Additionally, pedestrian and bicycle accommodations will be maintained throughout construction. So now I'm gonna turn it back to Eric to talk about how you can get involved. Thank you so much, Amy. Uh, so we welcome your your questions and comments. That's why we're here tonight. Uh, and there are several ways that you can uh, get involved and provide feedback uh, on either of these projects. Uh, so first, you can provide a comment in the uh, question window that I described earlier. Uh, so it should be over here or down there. Uh, <laughs> during this virtual public meeting, you can also download one of the comment forms uh, that I mentioned earlier uh, and send it back to the address shown on the form. Or third, you may uh, contact the uh, FDOT project managers directly. Uh, for Project A on Orange Avenue, uh, from Sand Lake Road to Prince Street, uh, you can contact FDOT project manager uh, Nazaru Isaac by email at nazaru.isaac at dot.state.fl.us uh, or by phone at 386-943-5547. Or for Project B that Amy just uh, spoke to uh, on Orange Avenue from Hansel Avenue, uh, or I'm sorry, Hansel Avenue from Prince Street to Mandalay Road, uh, please contact FDOT project manager Ty Gardner uh, by email at ty.gardner at dot.state.fl.us uh, or by phone at 386-943-5299. Finally, uh, you may visit the, uh, the website for each project by going to uh, cflroads.com. Um, for Project A, uh, if you can do the next slide there, please. Uh, for Project A, you can type the uh, project number 4411444-1 in the search bar to locate the project page. Uh, for Project B, uh, you type the project number 4357333 dash one in the search bar. Uh, and for project C, uh, you can search the project number 4411445-1. Uh, and we'll leave those up uh, during the uh, question and answer period as much as possible as well. Uh, finally, uh, public participation in this meeting is uh, solicited without regard to race, uh, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Uh, should you wish to express any concerns regarding FDOT compliance with Title VI, uh, please contact either Jennifer Smith, uh, the District uh, 5 Title VI coordinator, or Jacqueline Paramore, uh, the State Title VI coordinator, using the contact information shown here. I'd like to thank you once again for attending this virtual public meeting and, and encourage you uh, to please contact us with any questions or comments. Uh, and at this time, I'll turn it back to uh, Ty Gardner. Thank you. Thank you, Eric and Amy. Appreciate that. Again, I just want to remind everybody that we're here tonight to solicit your input. So if you wouldn't have, or if you would not mind, please filling out a comment card or 
typing your question in now, you can do that again by going to the right side of the screen and typing in your question there. Eric's going to read all the questions to us, at which time we'll decide which section that is in and we'll try to hand it off to the appropriate person to answer the question to the best of our ability. There might be some that we will not be able to answer completely tonight, but we will provide full answers as soon as we can after this meeting. Those full answers will be uh, posted at cflroads.com. And if you provide your information, we will certainly get the answers back to you directly. Eric? Uh, so Ty, uh, first one doesn't, doesn't speak to any specific project. Uh, it's just, what is a sidewalk gap? Sidewalk gap is nothing more than a spot along the roadway that there's sidewalk is missing. So it's our goal to fill in any of those missing sidewalks, or in this case, sidewalk gaps with either one of these projects, project A, project B, or even project C um, will fill in the gaps. Good Great question. Uh, next question, uh, it says the, the study for this project uh, included the consideration for a mid-block uh, pedestrian crossing on the one-way pair section. Uh, what was the reason that was not moved forward uh, into the design for Project B? I don't know that answer. I'll have to look into that. Uh, Mark, unless you know, I will have to get back to our um, scoping committee and find out, or our traffic operations folks and get the best answer possible. That, that's correct, Ty. Um, that, that wasn't scoped as part of our initial uh, negotiation, so we'll have to go back and, and see why that was not included. Great. Um, so the next question I have is, uh, the roads seem to all be in pretty good shape. Uh, are you having to resurface to accommodate these changes or is it just time to resurface? Mark, do you remember what the uh, structural numbers were on our project or uh, Nazira or Lori on yours? I, I know that they're starting to deteriorate and resurfacing is one of the reasons we're doing this project not um, it's not a result of the other work it's part of the part of the project well i i don't recall the number uh, ty but um that is one of the reasons was the mill and resurfacing to improve the pavement the other was due to the typical section change and having to scrape off markings and put new ones on and and have all these lines over i think that was part of the reason also yeah, and I'll, I'll remind everybody that the uh, construction isn't set to begin until, until fall 21, so it's still a little ways out. Um, the next question I have is, um, let me see here, bear with me, I apologize. Uh, was there any consideration given to the speed limit on these roads uh, with regard to, to semi-trucks specifically? Uh, so this person mentioned they complained to Edgewood and, and Bell Isle police about semis in the, the right lanes and drifting into the, the bike lanes specifically. Uh, narrowing the lanes and doing the curb bulb outs in, in section B will certainly help that to some degree. It won't help speed too much, although the prudent driver, when they see those curbs come out in narrower lanes, just a little bit, they're not much narrower than what they are today. But when they see those curbs come out, it will cause what we, it, it'll give them the effect of what we, what we consider side friction. And that side friction alone will make them slow to some degree. Um, if I understood the question correctly, we are not lowering the speed limit and we're not doing any lane restrictions for trucks. Um, that will come afterwards, traffic operations, once the facilities are open and operation for a little while, preferably once school goes back and we all get back to somewhat normal, they can go out there and do a speed study and determine if the speeds do or can be lowered. Um, Mark or Isaac or Nazero, do you have anything to add to that? No, Ty, I think uh, just what you said. Um, even on uh, project A, there is no, we are not deducing speed or anything. Um, so I'm good. I'm good with your response. No, I, I agree, Ty. Uh, Ty um, I mean, one of the things would reduce the typical section that will hopefully uh, enact some traffic common measures to, to help slow down due to the constraint uh, with. 
And another thing, the buffered bike lanes, I don't know if we explained it real well, but it now, instead of a five foot or six foot bike lane, it's a seven foot bike lane with two white stripes uh, between the traveling or the motorist and the bicyclist. So that'll also, the, the double white line and the pavement markings for the bike lanes will help cause that little side friction as well and hope, hopefully, hopefully help slow down and bring high, or more awareness to, to bicyclists. Great. Uh, and at this time, I do not have any additional questions. Um, oh, I say that and one came in. <laughs> Right on cue. Uh, before I answer this next question, if there are any other questions, uh, please uh, do get it into the comment box um, and we'll, we'll make sure we get that uh, answered while we have our project engineers on the line for you. Uh, so this last question that I have at the moment is, uh, is there going to be uh, additional parking along uh, Orange uh, or Hansel? If so, uh, maybe what would, uh, or I'm sorry, maybe that would slow truckers down? Um. And I can repeat that. Yeah, no, I, I understood the question. We are not introducing any new parking in that area, mainly because we're going to maintain the right turn and left turn lanes as they are. In some cases, we're going to extend the right turn or left turn lane to provide better stacking and storage distance. There are some sections within the city of Edgewood that could possibly add parking. We did have a conversation with the city planner the other day about that. We're going to look into it, but one thing we need to consider is site distance at intersections. We want to follow all the new criteria. So what I mean by that is if you're stopped at a stop bar and looking to your right to see oncoming traffic, there is a certain cone that we must maintain clear sight lines through. So. Mark and his team are going to look at, at the city of Edgewood and area and continue to work with them on possible additions to parking, but I can't commit now that we're going to add any. Great. And um, do you know offhand which uh, department we talked to regarding a speed study uh, and a safety study? That would be the District 5 Traffic Operations Office. Um, I believe it's Mike Sanders or Jim Strohs. They would help direct any kind of special study like that to the appropriate staff in, in their offices. We Great. can uh, we can provide their contact information in a written response. I think. Great. Uh, these are all fantastic questions. At, at this point, this is uh, oh. Every time I speak, another one comes. Um, this is great, guys. Uh, so as a resident of Edgewood, uh, I really hope you don't add uh, parking. Uh, I believe it would be dangerous. It's more of a comment than a question, but I don't know if you have anything really, to add. No, and thank you for that comment. That, that's important. So um, we would not do it in a way that's dangerous. And, and again, I, I don't know right now that we will be able to. I appreciate you all working with us on the, the digital side of things. This is a, a great uh, way to engage, even if uh, we're requiring you to use your fingers instead of talk to us directly. Um, I think I can safely say that <laughs> this is our last question at this point. All right. Well, once again, I, I thank you all for uh, for joining us. Uh, as you log out, there will be a, a brief question and answer. Uh, I think it's a, a three or four page, a uh, little, or not page, I'm sorry, it's scary, a three or four question poll uh, once you log out. Uh, once again, as you can see on your screen now, uh, both projects uh, can be found online at cflroads.com. Uh, uh, all the materials will be there. Uh, this presentation will be there as well in just a few days once we uh, get it processed and uploaded. Um, and uh, we'll stay on for just a few more minutes uh, should there be any other questions. Um, but uh, if, if you are happy as an attendee, uh, once again, we thank you for, for joining us and we'll, we'll let you uh, out to enjoy the rest of your evening and uh, hopefully some time with your family. So on behalf of uh, the project team, thank you very much. Ty, I don't know if you wanted to close out with anything.
No, I don't want to steal your thunder, Eric, but I think there's going to be some more surveys. Is there going to be one more survey that comes up or have we done them both? Yeah, there's just one more short one. Okay. Well, with that, Eric's going to put up another survey, but I just wanted to again thank everybody for participating in this. This is a new format for us. It's a new format for the department. Um, I think it's worked out fairly well considering the circumstances. Uh, trust me, I'd much rather be there with you in person, but given the situation and the circumstances that we're in, we really appreciate your attendance. I don't know what the final count was, but I think it was very good. So thank you all very much. Great, thank you guys once again. We're gonna stay on uh, just for another few more minutes if anybody has any questions, uh, but uh, we'll close out the, the, the public side of this and uh, thank you. Right, we have a couple more uh, comments coming in and uh, just want to read them for the recording. Uh, so uh, the first comment is uh, hopefully if you bring this to Edgewood, the residents uh, can be involved. Uh, we did do a, a pretty large mailing. Uh, so I would imagine that a decent number of those uh, residents were notified. So that is good there. Um, and then a uh, second comment is uh, we don't have a city planner and our clerk is not a resident. Uh, we just have a very close community. Uh, so I'm thinking that's speaking to the uh, community of Edgewood there. Oh, Ty, you might be on mute there. Sorry, click clicked the wrong button. Didn't want you to see me, just hear me. Um, we did have a long conversation with their city, Mark and I, with their, with their planner. She's a consultant to the city, but um, she represented herself as the planner so and we did meet with the city clerk B also 
And then another another comment we have coming in is just uh, for your information. Sometimes it's very hard to turn onto the roads uh, just north of uh, Camelot condos. Uh, we are always fearful of someone hitting us in the back. Great, great feedback there. Anybody that's still on, uh, do feel free to uh, to grab the handouts that are in the uh, control panel there uh, as comment card and the, the general overview of both of these projects um, available for your download. And again, they'll be on the project websites as well, uh, going to cflroads.com and searching those two, uh, two strings of numbers on the, the screen right now. I won't uh, bore you by reading them. So thank you all once again. All right, chiming in one last time. It looks like uh, we are good to go. We've got all the questions and comments in. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and say good night. But thank you once again for uh, joining us uh, for this uh, public virtual public meeting. Uh, I think it was a good time on our side. Uh, not too many bugs. And I really appreciate the great conversation you guys had with us uh, through the question box. Uh, we thank you again and uh, have a great evening.